Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin Lecturing Computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to perform an independent or unpaired t-test using SPSS. Now before we go over to SPSS, let's take a look at the data that we want to run our independent t-test on. Let's say I'm conducting a drug trial and I have two groups uh, of users, one which has been administered with a drug and one which is, has not been uh, administered with a drug and that's my control group. And I've got my two scores for the control group, uh, two sets of scores for my control group and my drug group here on the left hand side. So you can see I've got 12 values for the control and 13 values for the drug group. And what I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to be able to prove statistically uh, whether there's a difference or not between the two groups. So I'm looking to see does the drug have an effect. So my null hypothesis H0 is going to be that the mean of the control group is equal to the mean of the drug group um, and that tells us that there's no difference between the two groups. My alternate hypothesis is that the mean of the control group is not equal to the mean of the drug group. In other words, that there is a difference between the two groups from which I might infer that the uh, drug has an effect. And I'm going to do this test at an alpha value equal to 0 0.01. So let's now go over to SPSS and take a look at what we need to do in order to perform the t-test. So I've split my screen into two here. On the left hand side I've got my SPSS stats data editor and on the right hand side I've got my uh, viewer to see the results. So first of all I need to go and open my file. So I'm going to choose file and open and select data. Now I've got my data uh, already prepared in an Excel file so I'm just going to change the files of type uh, to Excel and browse to wherever you have your data. It could be a CSV file, uh, it could be an Excel file, uh, it could be a text file, whatever it is, browse to it to get your file and select open. Now SPSS can tell that I'm reading an, an Excel file here and it knows that I've got labels in the first row so it has checked the box read variable names from the first row of data so I'm going to leave that checked and click on OK. Now this brings the data into SPSS in the two columns um, format like we saw on the slide a few moments ago. So I've got my control data on the left hand column and my drugs data on the right hand column. Unfortunately, uh, in SPSS, I cannot now just run the t-test straight away on these two sets of variables. I need to tell SPSS that I, I'm going to group these two variables into two groups. So I want my control group to be grouped into group 1 and my drug group to be grouped into group 2. So I need to set up two groups here. So the way I do that is if I want to have all my um, variables, my control scores and my drug scores in the same column. So I'm going to leave, I'm highlighting them here now, the control scores uh, 1 to 12. I'm going to leave them as they are and I'm going to copy and paste or cut and paste the uh, drug scores from the second column and place those in underneath the values in the first column here. So the first 12 values are going to be my group 1 and the second set of 13 values is going to be my group 2. And in my second column here, I'm just going to type in 12 ones. So I'm going to use the value of 1 to represent group 1. So do that for the first 12 values. And I'm going to use the value of 2 to represent my group 2. So I'm almost there. Um, I, can, I now need to uh, make some further changes and I need to switch to the variable view. So if you look at the bottom left hand side of Excel, I'm currently in the data view. So if I click on the variable view tab uh, to change to the view that you see now. So the first column now contains both the control and drug data. So I'm now going to change the name of that. And let's say we're going to call it treatment. And then the second column is our group. So I'm just going to call this our groups. I'm going to, just for the sake of tidiness, reduce the decimal places from one decimal place to zero. And very importantly here, I want to go to the value section here. So in the group section here, I need to tell SPSS what the value of 1 means and what the value of 2 means. So the value of 1 it stands for the control group and the value of 2 stands for the drug group. So let's make that change by clicking on the box here under values and up comes the value labels um, uh, window here. So I'm going to give the value of 1 and give it a label of control and click on add. So that puts it into this uh, list of uh, options in here. And the value of 2, I'm going to give this the value of drug. And click on Add. So now I've got my two groups. So I, now I know that all values labeled with number 1 is the, is the control, and all values labeled number 2 is the drug data. And then click on OK. 
I don't need to make any further changes here, so I'm going to switch back to the data view. And we can see here now that the data looks a little bit tidier. My first column are the treatments, so the first 12 values labeled with a 1. Uh, they are my control group, and my uh, second uh, set of 13 values here are labeled with number 2. They are my drug group. There is an option in Excel in SPSS here. It's the uh, switch the numeric to uh, alphanumeric option here. It's the value labels uh, where I'm pointing to up above uh, here, uh, just to the bottom left of the help menu. So if I click on that, it will insert the words that I have just typed into my uh, labels value for the group, con either control or drug. I'm now ready to conduct the uh, t-test. So to do this, select the analyze menu. Choose compare means because that's what we're doing here. We're comparing the means of the two samples. And the option here that I need is the independent samples t-test. So select that option. Up pops a window which uh, asks us to, to tell us tell SPSS what the test variable is and what the grouping variable is. Now in our case here, we've just got two variables. So the treatment variable, that's going to go into the test variable so I can pick it up and drag it over. And the group variable for either control or drug, I'm going to drop that down into the grouping variable uh, selection over in the middle. Now you can see under grouping variable that group has got two question marks so it doesn't yet know what the two groups are so I need to define these two groups so click on the define groups button here and just tell it that the first group has a value of one and that the second group has a value of two and click on continue. One last change to make before I run the test in the options button up here uh, the default option is a uh, alpha value of 0.05 for 95% significance. I'm working at 0 0.01, so I need to change that to 99. And click Continue. And I'm now ready to run my test, so click OK. And I want to switch to the viewer. I'm going to move it a little bit left here so we can see it. And here are my results. First of all, SPSS will give me some descriptive statistics, such as the mean and standard deviation and the number of variables in each group. Uh, so it's always wise to test those, for example, to make sure you've got the right number of variables in each group, 12 and 13 in my case here. And the uh, table that we're mostly interested in here is the independent samples test. Uh, we can see here that our variances are equal, so we've got a significance value of 0 0.638 for Levine's test for equality of variance, so that tells us that the variances are equal. And the two values are two sets of values that I'm most interested in here are the T value in the, the T column and the significance or P value in this column over here. So I'm going to take that table and go back to my uh, PowerPoint slide to uh, so that I can you highlight some options on this table. So this is the same table copied over into a slide so that I can highlight it. A reminder of our null and alternative hypothesis at the top up here. So I'm going to either uh, reject or fail to reject a null hypothesis. In my independent samples test here, I've highlighted the T-scores and I've highlighted the significance level. So the T-value, and here's how I reported, a T for 23, uh, that's a degrees of freedom of 23, um, uh, is equal to minus 0 0.118, so that's a very, very low T-value, uh, and our P-value is equal to 0 0.907, which of course is a very, very high P-value. So if the P-value is high, we cannot reject the null hypothesis, and if the T-value is low, we also cannot reject the null hypothesis. So our p-value is greater than alpha equal to 0 0.01. So uh, therefore, uh, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So in this case here, we have not found a difference between the mean. So our null, that the mean of the control group is the same as the mean of the drug group, that that null still stands. So that's how you perform an independent t-test using SPSS. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.